Right, so question six, the cubic polynomial is defined by x, uh, 2x cubed minus 7x squared plus 2x plus 3. Given that x minus 3 is a factor, express it in fully factorised form. So if, um, if x minus 3 is a factor, we need, to, we, need to work this, we need to work this out. It's not a detailed reasoning question. Uh, can I just kind of do a, a little word of caution? So I think, I think there were a couple of people at this point who I suspect did this in the calculator, went to the polynomial uh, degree 3, put in 2x squared minus 7, 2x cubed minus 7x squared plus 2x plus 3, and got that the roots of this are 3, 1, and minus a half. And so wrote x minus 3, x minus 1, x plus a half. Why is that wrong? Because it's a 2x cubed at the start, and multiplying that out doesn't give us a 2x cubed. So those are, the, those are the three roots, but that just means they're the solutions to these three things. And it's that one there that's the problem, isn't it? That, um, and if you multiply the things at the end, it doesn't give you, min it doesn't give you plus 3. That would give you minus 3, plus 3 over 2 as your final term. So uh, be careful. By all means, use the calculator to, to check that things are what you want them to be at the end, that it gives you the roots, but don't be guided solely by the calculator in what you're doing with this. Um, I, you, you know there are different methods for doing this. I would like to do a little grid division where I say here we've got a 2x cubed, so this must be a 2x squared up there. That gives me minus 6x squared. I'm supposed to have minus 7 of them, so that needs another minus 1x squared there. So this must be a minus x at the top, which gives me plus 3x, minus x times minus 3. Uh, I'm supposed to have 2x, so I need to take away an x to get me to 2x. So this must be a minus 1, and that does give me a plus 3. So I'm happy with that. That gives me that f of x is x minus 3. 2x squared minus x minus 1. If I'm going to factorise that, then uh, it does say fully factorised. I, I know, because I've checked on the calculator, that there are three real number um, kind of nice roots, so um, rational roots. So that's going to be, what is it going to be? x minus 1 and 2x plus 1. That would give me 2x squared plus x minus 2x is minus x minus 1 and there it is in fully factorised form ok um, obviously you can do long division you can just kind of get that quadratic factor just by inspection so however you do it, it wasn't detailed reasoning so you, you know if you just arrive at your, your three things you will get the marks for that um, but that one that I wrote and then rubbed out is you score zero for the whole question if there's no method that shows how you arrived at that. So be really cautious. Part two, sketch the graph indicating the coordinates of any points of intersection with the axes. Well, uh, what I've seen from this is that the graph is going to intersect the axes at uh, x equals 3, 1 and minus a half when y is 0, and if x is 0, I'm going to get y equals plus 3. So they, they're my points of intersection, just bearing that in mind. Um, so I've got a cubic graph that does... I've not drawn that well at all. Hang on, let me go back. Uh, is that any better? Well, it doesn't doesn't have to be perfect. There's minus a half. There is plus one. There is plus three. That is point three on the y-axis. It looks something like that. Some of you have graphical calculators. Not not everybody does. Um, there we go. There's x. There's y. Uh, one mark for the um, positive cubic graph, and one mark for. Um, the points of intersection. Um, Ocean, I think I may have done you out of a mark on that. 
I'm just thinking back because I marked yours later. Oh, this is on the recording. Sorry. Um, how many marks did I give you for that question? Did you deserve more than that? Um, oh, okay. Right. <laughs> there we go. Um, uh, next bit. So that's the sketch. Solve the inequality. Oh, this is harsh. This one as well. So giving your answer in set notation. We hate set notation. So um, the, the inequality is where is it less than zero? So it's less than zero for x. Now, I, I would do this, even if you're not sure about the notation. I think we know that this is going to be x less than minus a half and x between uh, 1 and 3. We can see that, can't we, from our diagram? That's when it's negative, when x is less than minus a half and between 1 and 3. So in terms of putting it into set notation, this is the bit that we don't really like. Um, those two things can't happen at the same time because you can't be both less than minus a half and between one and three at the same time. So it's not an intersect, is it? They're not both happening at once. It's an and thing, it's a union thing because both of those things are the, the conditions for f of x to be negative. So, um, so what we're saying is that x has to belong to the first set of things which we write like that, and x has to belong to the second set of things. So belong to the set of minus one, uh, of one up to three. Uh, and that's the form that they were looking for. That's what they wanted with the union symbol in between. Part four says the graph is transformed by a stretch parallel to the x-axis, scale factor a half. Now that means, you know, if we were doing this in f of x notation, a stretch scale factor a half in the x direction would be f of 2x, wouldn't it? So that means I'm going to replace x with 2x. So the new graph, f of 2x, is going to be uh, 2 times 2x cubed minus 7 times 2x squared plus 2 times 2x plus 3. I'm not sure, did they give you the mark? No, they wanted you to do a bit more with that. So that is 16x cubed um, minus, what is that going to be? 4 times, so 28x squared plus 4x plus three, that's y equals, it's, that's the new graph that we would have. And there you go. Um, you could do that in factorised form as well, but um, just getting the transformation right way around. And that's maths. <laughs>